Good evening friends, it is the 31st of October in the evening, uh, it's 10 to 30. Um, I'm actually close to being on my way to bed, but I wanted to find out what book to start out with for the believe -a before I went to bed so that I can read it from the morning. I'm kind of exciting. It's, I excited to see what to start out with. Um, I've sort of been itching to pick up the books that I want to read, so we'll see if I can manage to fit any of them in. If you don't know what books I'm planning on reading for the readathon or hoping to read for the readathon, then I'll leave a link to my TBR above so you can check it out. Anyway, let's get started. I have found the compendium. As I said and mentioned in my TBR, I haven't really read up on what prompts are going to be for this, so I'll just try and fit them in whenever. Um, I think it's a really fun concept of this readathon, and I think Gavin has put a lot of effort into creating everything. Um, and he's got a lot of um, different middle grade authors on board to help out with giving out recommendations. I think there are three or four recommendations for each prompt so that you can have something to go for. And then there's um, talk about the author that is. Um, giving the prompts books as well and uh, usually they would fit into um, whatever prompt it is so let's move to to the first thing it says believe it on three the mystery of the missing maleficarum is a month-long readathon dedicated to reading children's literature the readathon will begin on no November 1st and will end on November 30th 2020 Navigate your way through the manner of make believe and pick up clues to find out who stole the Maleficarum. You can collect the clues with each reading challenge you complete, of which there are 13. 13? I thought it was 10. Begin with the key to unlock the manor and then choose however many challenges you would like to complete. You can just do just one or go for the full 13 or even more than that if you wish to read multiple books for each prompt. Um, so actually, it's not necessarily all of the prompts, but I kind of want to do all of them, so I'll just take one in after each other. The first one is the key, so everything appears to be quiet at the manner of the make-believe-a-thon, but you know better. The eerie fog has rolled through the deep woods, almost making your journey to the manor impossible. With the full moon and the dangers of the the woods behind you, you approach the entrance of the manor. There is a key on the ground, but you can't use it until you have completed your first very prompt. In order to use the key, you must read a mystery. So, any mystery, that could be a lot. And then there's a little bit talk about Robin Stevens. Robin Stevens is uh, famous for her murder most unladylike, so I can definitely check out if I want to read that. I will just go on to my app my overdrive app because i don't actually i don't believe any of the books that i have on my list to read would work for this specific prompt was it robin stevens there's also the nancy springer series which i believe that i've heard of that definitely um let's see what gavin has recommended the Green Glass House by Kate Milford. I know that I have actually had this on my TBR for some time. And it is available to read immediately. So I could definitely read that one. Then there's The Highland Falcon Thief. I don't know any of these next two. Then there are, is the High Rise Mystery Shana by Shana Jackson. And obviously Robin Stevens' Murder Most Unladylike. There's one series that I've had on my list to read for so long, also on Overdrive. I've um, forgotten what she's called, and I'm unsure if it's considered children's or middle grade. I have to place a hold for it, and I'm also not sure it's actually middle grade, maybe it's young adult. Um, it's just I have a feeling I'm really going to like it, and I've wanted to read it for so long, but it's by Ellen Bradley. And the first book is called The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. But if I want to finish all of them, I can also go for Shoulder. Oh! 
and Nola Home. So is this is this a series the series that's been inspiring the Netflix show that's currently running? Because that's interesting. Okay. But this I have to place hold on. Typically. Okay, so I can read that one. But I can read the green grass house. Green glass house? How long is that? I think I might go with Green Glass House because I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more about um, like a little bit more fantastical than the other one. Um, I really wanted to read the Anola Holmes one because I do enjoy um, Sherlock Holmes uh, related books, but it will be another time considering there's a hole in it. Um, so I will be borrowing Green Glass House. I need to go on to my Libby app and download it to start out reading it tomorrow. So that will be my first book. I am looking forward to seeing what the next one will be. Um, I'm hoping that I can finish reading through this one tomorrow and get a good start to this because I know weekdays I won't get as much reading in and I know some of my books are longer than others. I don't actually know how fast I would be able to read this if it's like more sophisticated middle grade, there's definitely a difference in terms of writing style and density. Um, so we'll see how things goes, but I'm happy to get started. And I haven't read a real mystery, a, a middle grade mystery before, so I'm going to be looking forward to reading that. Um, I don't think, at least. So yeah, but there's my update. A little longer than I anticipated, but I'll let you know what I'm thinking about the book tomorrow. If you're unsure about what I'm planning on doing, I'm hoping to vlog this weekly. So have a vlog up each week, letting you know about my progress. Considering I have, I have to read the 13 books for the Believathon, I have a long way to go. So um, the good thing about Believathon is that it is children's books or middle grade and that makes it easier. I'll try and add in some audiobooks along the way, but I have a couple of other audiobooks that I want to try and finish. Um, so it'll be a lot of physical reading, ebook reading, and stuff like that. So, but it's fine. Um, yeah. And uh, happy Halloween to all of you who are celebrating that, even if it is a strange time. I personally, I personally don't really know, do Halloween, um, but. Today is my brother's birthday, so I've been to my brother's birthday all day and came home like an hour and a half ago. And uh, yeah, um, tomorrow I don't have many plans, so I'm going to be listening to a lot of audio. I'll also update you on my regular reading, but I'll be listening to audio, get some stuff done down here, around here, try and read as much as I can from my book. I might have take, taken my mouth full with saying that I want to finish first book tomorrow it depends a lot on how the writing is um, and I have been ha getting into a habit of sitting down and watch a lot of TV uh, recently because I am deep into a lot of Marvel stuff so I am currently watching se season season of um, Daredevil so I'm really into that right now murder Matt murder is one of my favorite characters from the Marvel Universe so really enjoying it um, yeah, but this was this update. I will talk to you later. Bye. Hello, friends. It is now the 1st of November. It is actually almost 4. Is it 4 or 5 p.m.? I can never tell. It is 4. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Uh, can't see it. It almost looks like it's between 4 and 5, so... <laughs> um, I'm always a little uncertain, but it's... Four o'clock. Um, I felt like it was long, like later. Um, it's been a bit of a rough day for me. I tr I thought I would have read a whole bunch by now, but I started out my day being with a bit of a headache. Um, if you're new to my channel, I often get like tension headaches and stuff, and has to deal with that um, every once in a while. And it's been more prominent the last couple of months. I think. Um, because I haven't been training in the fitness center as much as I used to do. Um, no matter what anyone will say, uh, um, building your strength, especially in your shoulders, back and stuff like that will 
make sure you have a better um, posture when you're sitting down and all of that and it actually helps with a lot with my tension headaches but I haven't been really good at sticking to a plan so I'm going to try and attempt to start out with that again I was actually supposed to go down today uh, but with a headache running I know I won't be able to get through that um, but I hope that I can start with it next week um, so I did everything else that I know, <laughs> all the other tricks I know, and I'm now feeling better. Um, one of the tricks is massage pillow, <laughs> which is a bit of a robust one, um, but it works really well. Um, usually my pain is in the lower back and in my neck area, so that is what gives me the headaches most often. So I know that. I will also like try and massage further up but they're never as painful um, so yeah um, I also went for a walk which also always help fresh air is great for that and then <laughs> the last thing I do is getting actually pain meds I am a believer no it's difficult to say because I do believe that you should definitely take whatever um, pain meds you can if it will help you uh, but more often than not it won't help me at much anyway so it'll be the last solution if none of the other things work i'll take up pain meds and um be also because pain meds makes me drowsy and sleepy um so it's sort of an extra hurdle um but i have managed to read something i'm about to start chapter four so i've only read three chapters i'm on page 102 of 500 it's not 500 pages but it is when it's converted into an ebook, so I'm about 25% into it. So I've definitely read something, but I haven't read a lot. And I'm going to try and read something later. I am also. I've also just decided I need junk food today. <laughs> I don't feel like cooking anything, um, but I am feeling a lot better than I did this morning. So somewhere, some of my tricks has worked for me. So <laughs> I um, have to also this evening. What going to be watching the first episode of the new season of The Nurse School, which is um, having a premiere today. It's a Danish TV show. I love it so much. It's set in the 50s, I think. Um, and following a group of nurses um, who are starting on school, like nurse school. Um, and for the first time ever, they have male nurses being part of their nurse program. And so it follows like three male nurses and I think three or four new female nurses as well, some who's been there a while, and there's a couple of doctors as well, as, of course, and um, more like that. But it's really, really interesting, and I love seeing it, and I hope I can't wait to see what's going to happen this season. I'm, the, the trailer for it looks really great, so I'm really looking forward to watching it tonight. I also still haven't watched the baking show, the great Danish baking show, which was aired this yesterday. I didn't watch it, um, and I thought I would have watched it now, but I haven't. So I will see when I will do that. It might not be today. I might save it for tomorrow, but we'll see. Um, but right now, I might actually sit down and read for a bit, and yeah. Um, but this was all my update for now. I'll talk to you later. My camera is flashing at me so I'll definitely try and keep this short. See ya! I actually forgot to say something. Uh, I also have been working on The Warden Man by Peter Reed Brett. It has been my audio for actually a couple of weeks now. Um, I'm only reading this when I'm at home so um, but I am currently um, closer to the end. I have two hours left of the audio. Um, I won't finish it today but I'm enjoying it. It follows three different perspectives, like, um, what are they called? Arlen, uh, Leisha, <gasps> and what's the last one? Uh, three perspectives, and they follow them, and it's a, a, a world where after the night comes around, um, things happen outside. You don't, you stay inside, lock your doors because of the demons outside, um, but then there are some people who are warded with protected things and they go out to hunt for these demons um, after the evening has come around and stuff and uh, we have these three who are apprentices in this so yeah 
I'm enjoying it and um, but I, yeah I'll let you know more about it when I finish it and my final thoughts of it so yeah but this was everything I have for you right now I'll talk to you later bye hello friends it is Tuesday 2nd of November no it's Monday the 2nd of November um, it's because usually I start vlogging on a Monday <laughs> I'm a little off. Um, I haven't read t a ton today. Um, usually I don't get through a whole lot of reading in weekdays. Um, these days mostly because I get sucked into something on TV. And uh, that was the case today. But I did read something. I am uh, about to start chapter 6. Which means I am 168 pages into it out of... 499 which equals to I'm 30% into it 34% I'm enjoying it enough it's interesting it follows it's set in this weird hotel in kind of thing called the glass house um, where we're following the perspective of a boy named Milo, uh, following the perspective of a boy named Milo, and uh, he is adopted, and his parents own this hotel, or adoptive parents, um, and something there's something strange about the house. But then, when he's about to go on a vacation, suddenly a lot of people shows up to stay over at the inn making him a little bit sad because he was looking forward to getting some vacation time away from the hotel um, but with suddenly a um, lot of people showing up they needed to cover that and they didn't really know why they out of all of the sudden um, all came there and they he might think there's a different purpose to it so when his someone who is working at the store, he brings her along her daughter, and they go on a sort of they start a sort of role playing game and trying to figure out what's going on, why are all of these people here, and someone stole something, and they want to find out what it is. So that's how this ties into a mystery, and um, yeah, um, it's interesting, um, but I don't think I'm super super loving it. Um, but it's definitely interesting and keeping my interest, so that's fine for the most part. Um, otherwise, today I have been watching a whole ton of Daredevil. I think I have watched four episodes, maybe five. I think it's only four. They're each an hour long, so I think that would be what I ended up watching. And I really wanted to keep on watching, but I have two episodes left of this season, so... And I know I won't be able to... I know, I mean, I know I need sleep, so I have to wait until tomorrow. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Oh, so many things happen and it hurts me, but I still really enjoy the characters. And, like, this series has, like, the best villain in Wilson Fisk. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, considering I only have two episodes, I can get a little more red. Um, but I also have to go to the gym tomorrow. Um, but apart from Glass House Hotel, Glass House, Green Glass House, it's Green Glass House, that's what it's called. Um, apart from that, I have also listened to Murder on Amsterdam Avenue. Where I am, I have an hour and 15 minutes left of that. Uh, I started that last week and I've continued with it and I'm enjoying it. I think I have an hour and something left. Um, so I'm thinking I might finish it tomorrow if all goes well. Um, then I have um, the Waterman. I haven't found where I am, but I'm, I have an hour left of the audio, I think. So, I don't know if I'll finish that tomorrow. I don't think I will, because to, I don't have to cook tomorrow. And usually when I listen to audios is when I do stuff here at home. So, I have 
made sure to have some leftovers so I can go to the gym tomorrow and eat after that easily and not have to stress about also cooking something so I'm good for that um, yeah so this is my update for today I'm also really worried you guys I don't think tomorrow will be election day in the US but I won't know it until Wednesday um, morning what the result will be and I'm truly worried about everything and how it's going to be playing out and even if even if Biden will win and become the new president Trump is still going to be there until January 20th is that when he's the next one and how much rock, uh, how much of a wreck can Trump leave it in 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 that time that's also something I'm thinking about I worry a lot about this and there's not a lot that's not nothing I can do about it which makes it even more annoying um, but I'm also just in so many ways grateful <laughs> that I live where I do and don't have to stress about these things as much as you guys might have to if you live in the States um, so yeah and on top of this then there's all the worrying about what's going to happen with the COVID-19 situation everyone else is shutting down we are not and I don't think it depends it depends on what happens over the next week or two, I think. Um, because we just started on the newer restrictions. They've made a new system in Denmark where you can say there are different levels of crisis in this COVID-19 situation. Where there's one, two, three, four and five and currently we're on three. Which means that it's... We can handle it, we have good capacity on our, in our health system. But it's worrisome because it's an it's something that's happening all over the country and it's affecting everyone, not just regional um, or some local places. If things don't look seems to be changing in a week's time or two weeks' time for sure, then or if it goes worse, then I think it's a lockdown again. I can't see why how they can avoid it. I wonder when we're ever we are going to go come back to a normal state in this uh i think we all sort of need just everything to go back to normal and that will be excellent but that's not the situation and i'm trying to do as much as i can to stay positive <laughs> but it's difficult um, yeah, but anyway, this is my update for now. I hope that tomorrow will be a little bit more positive. Anyway, it's 10.30. I'm gonna go read something until I fall asleep. And then I'm sleeping until tomorrow and I'll talk to you then. Bye. Hello friends, it is... Thursday. <laughs> I didn't check in with you the last three days because I've been anxious, I've been confused and weird dirt and not in the mood to read, or at least not physical books. I have read something today, I think I read for an hour and maybe 15 minutes, maybe a little bit more. Um, and made some progress in the green, gra gra gla green glass house. I am over halfway now. I have reached just under 300 pages of those 500 pages. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm just, I'm not super into the book. Um, which I'm a little bit sad about. I thought it would be better, um, but I, it's okay. It's not like it's bad or anything, but it's just a little bit mediocre, mediocre for me. Um, I have finished 
shoes. <laughs> I have finished um, the Watered Man. I finished that yesterday. This is the first book in the Demon Cycle. I think that's what it's called. Um, it follows three perspectives. One of them is Reed, one of them is Leisha, and one of them is Arlen. And they are sort of starting apprenticeships for uh, becoming demon hunters or fighters or something like that. Um, and it's in a world where after the sun goes down, demons come out and hunt the night. And everyone barricades themselves inside um, with protective wards around the houses to make sure that they don't um, come in to the houses. And then there are people who is able to hunt these demons who has like these magical powers and some um, wards like yeah around them so that they can go and actually f kill the demons and the, it's really interesting concept and I enjoyed it a lot and um, there are elements where I wished it was a little bit I don't know went a little bit more in depth in a few places but overall I enjoyed my time and I'm definitely looking forward to reading on in the series um, I understand why it's a quite a popular book, especially here in Denmark, I noticed. Thing is, when I listen to an audio, I can always see how many other people are listening to the same book at the same time. And usually, because of the books that I read, the majority of books in English doesn't get a lot of a ton of attention. So not a lot of other people are reading them. But this specifically, every time I listen to it, there's like five or six, seven other people also listening at the same time. And I don't experience that very often, so I feel like this is a pretty uh, popular book considering they were listening to the English version because it's been translated as well, so I know that uh, probably more people have been reading that book, um, the translated version. I think I'm giving it a 4 or 5 stars, so that's definitely fine. I'm also pretty close to finishing The Midnight Bargain, which is an audio that I've been listening to the couple, last couple of days. It's a new release, I think it came out in October or September um, and at first I didn't really know what to think of it or feel about it. Um, it's a historical set fantasy um, where this girl, she has these magical abilities um, and she's about to start in on their courting life or whatever you're calling it. Um, but she's not allowed to do the magic that she's able to once she's married so she doesn't really want to get married anyway i'm kind of enjoying it and um yeah it's definitely the last bit here has been very interesting the thing the the roommate last remaining uh couple of hours i've been very interested in what's going on and uh yeah she has a horrible dad that's for sure i don't really like him so those two books are working on, I'm working on fine and then I hope that I'll finish The Green Glass House tomorrow so I can continue with something else and hopefully it'll be, I'll be able to fit in a quick read this weekend um, so that I can feel like I, I make progress on things because I think it's going so slowly right now. Um, but I also think, I just checked to see if there's an audio of Green Glass House, but there is one for the second book. Um, and hopefully next week I'll also be better at actually watching, <laughs> reading something. These past days have been terrible for my own sanity. Um, there's no doubt that the American election is, has affected me a lot. But then on top of that, there are so many things going on here in Denmark right now with the coronavirus. So it's just a lot to take in. So when I've tried to not avoid media, I can't focus on reading. So I've been watching some stuff on TV and I that's just been an easier escape. Escapism? <laughs> than otherwise. So yeah, that's the situation. Um, in Denmark, apparently, um, we have... <laughs> It's not like Denmark has one of the largest, it has the largest um, production of mink. And I know mink 
the mink business is not something that I've ever really um, been pro for whatever. Uh, I am not ever going to like buy a fur or anything like that. I'm not going to support it like that. But it is a big business in Denmark, and like we have like I don't know. And while I really don't think that the business about breeding animals up just for the skin is a good thing. I know that the rest of the mink is also used for other things, so it's not like it's going to waste, but still a lot of people are dependent on these jobs and every every mink... <laughs> the thing is that the COVID-19, the virus, um, has infected the mink, so they have positive coronavirus tests and they have mutated the virus and um, infected humans with that virus creating a co sort of, like, not, not a lot of people, like I think they've caught across 12 who has been infected with this newer virus and apparently it looks like when they've tested on it, that those who've been affected by that won't be um, the vaccine that we're currently working on getting uh, through, like, to work from next year probably won't work if on this newer virus. So what the Danish government has decided is that they are going to uh, kill all of the mink in all of the farms all over Denmark, no matter if they are sick or not, everything is going to be, um, yeah, uh, to, uh, all of the mix are going to be killed and it's weird, um, it's it's a weird thing that's happened and while I really <laughs> um, am against the whole idea of that, what they're doing, I understand why this is such a heartbreaking moment for them as business owners and um, something, something that they've been doing all their lives. So it's been a weird couple of days and because of this restriction, all of these... On top of that, now because there are people who've been affected with this virus in northern Jutland, that's north of where I live, um, they've shut down, locked down like seven counties in northern Jutland, meaning that no one can cross the counties to or within each other they have to stay in their own county and they have to stay at home as much as they can everyone ha uh, demanded to work from home unless they're in a critical function and um, the majority of the schools are shutting down except the very younger classes um, classes from fifth grade to up and up will be homeschooled again um, and their earlier classes will be going in. But I think that's more because of them needing the norm more than your older students. I don't know. I can't tell you why. Um, so that's what's happening. <laughs> and it's just a lot to take in everything. And yeah, um, maybe tomorrow uh, things will be better. <laughs> it's the weekend. It's my parents' um, wedding day. A wedding anniversary thing. Um, they've been married for 33 years, I think. Um, so we're actually all going to my parents. We have a gathering limit to 10 people, but I, like we have a social bubble that is um, limited to 10 people. Um, but I only have six in mind, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Um, I can actually add four friends if I want to, but I know it's difficult for those people uh, who has um, partners and families on that side and make everything work so they can actually see them because it's obviously family wants to see each other and stuff. So that's how I am tackling it and uh, then we'll see how things go. Uh, this was a very long, lengthy update, so yeah. But this was everything I had to say today and I'll talk to you maybe tomorrow. At least I'll try and talk to you sometime later.
before the weekend is over. <laughs> Hello friends, it is now Saturday, it, I just came back from a training session, it's 1.30 I believe and um, I went for a training session, now I'm gonna go to my parents in like a minute but before I go I'm going to picking, be picking my next book, I haven't finished my book yet but I think I might finish it at my parents and so I want to bring a book in case that happens so I want to find out what my next read will be once I finish the one I'm currently working on Okay, the next prompt is fingerprints. Taking a look around the manner of make believe on reveals that nobody has lived in this in years. Lived in it in years. It was thought that the Maleficarum would be safe and hidden in a building rumored to be haunted. Uh, the doors open themselves. It sends a shiver down your spine when you approach the nearest door. You notice there's something on the handle. It looks like the villain might have opened it. In order to collect the fingerprints, you must read a book written by an author from a different culture as you. Okay. Well, this is definitely going to be an easy pick, I think. It doesn't actually say what his culture is uh, on his Goodreads page or on his, in this book. But, um, Sal and Gabby is definitely has some... Cuban and um, Middle American um, heritage kind of thing going on um, and it is super interesting. I'm looking forward to reading it and Carlos Hernandez is definitely from a different culture. That's just what I wanted to say. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading this and um, I'm going to mention the recommendations because in case someone wanted recommendations, like he's made an effort. so. The, reg the author that rec that delivered the prompt was Rishani Trakshi. Um, the recommendations, one of them, there are three recommendations and all of, like, two of them are on my, already on my TBR, so I'm going to read them at some point. The first one is Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Gracie Lynn. Uh, Grace Lynn. I haven't read, I haven't heard of this before, so this is the one that's not on my TBR already. It says, in the valley of the fruitless mountain, a young girl called Min Lee seeks out the old man of the moon and the jade dragon to reverse her family's poor fortune. And then Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky by Kwame Mbalia. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I definitely am interested in this. I've become a lot more interested in the remaining Regret and Presents um, titles since I read Gabby, Sal and Gabby Face the Universe. Fi uh, Ga Sal and Gabby Breaks the Universe as well as um, also actually the one by Jun Hali. I really enjoy both of them and uh, I also read Arusha and the End of Time. Um, and so I'm I'm actually interested in reading all of the, at least give all of the series a try um, because they all have authors who are from a different culture and it talks about mythology that Rick Ryden wouldn't be able to write in with as much knowledge as they have out. And the last one is one I'm also very, very interested in reading, and that's in Other Words for Home by Yasmin Walker. Um, and this one is about, it says, Jude never thought she'd be leaving her older brother and father behind in Syria, but when things become volatile, 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 Jude and her mother are sent to live in Cincinnati. So, 
those are the three recommendations for this but i am going to be reading sal and gabby fix the universe and uh, we'll get back to you later with a reading update i'm bringing a uh, uh, wait i have a Mark, so I bring, have to bring one extra. This was everything I wanted to share right now. I will talk to you about reading progress later and um, when I have more time. See ya. Hello friends, it is now Sunday at 11.15 a.m. Um, I just wanted to check in with a reading update finally um, because I didn't yesterday. Um, I finished the green glass house yesterday um and i don't know <sighs> there are elements that i really enjoyed like they were good enough but i wasn't interested in this story i wasn't compelled to pick it up and i wasn't it just lacked something for me to completely enjoy it so i think i'm on about a three stars maybe a little lower i haven't actually decided yet but that's where i'm ending um on friday i finished another audiobook i finished uh, the midnight bargain by cl polk and i de definitely ended up enjoying this one i think i mentioned that that it was had an interesting turn of event uh, an interesting last couple of hours that really hooked me in so i'm ending up i think giving it a four out of five stars and then i started on the Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by V.E. Schwab because everyone are just praising it, everything about it uh, even people who usually don't really like V.E. Schwab's writing has actually really said very nice things about it so I was interested so I decided to read it and figure out for myself um, and it came in through my Overdrive library so I decided to start it on, on Friday after I finished and the midnight back and I didn't get very far into it. I think I've listened to an about half an hour um, or something like that at most. Um, so I can't really say what it's about really. Um, I have started on um, Skeleton Crew by Stephen King, which is a short story collection. The first story in here is The Mist. The Mist is actually 159 pages, so it's a novella. And then the rest of them are stories. I've sort of marked them off with a tab. I usually do that with short stories. So you can see the first story is quite long um, before uh, the next story starts. Um, but I have listened to about 52 pages. I just started on part four of this. So yeah, um, so far it's interesting. I know that The Mist is one of the a pretty popular Stephen King. It's been one of one of those that's been filmatized. Uh, I haven't watched very many of Stephen King's movies actually. I don't know why, but it's one of those that's been made into a film. Um, and I mean, it's a hundred and fifty pages novella, so it's not like you can make a movie out of that. So I don't know if it was actually a serial like a couple of movies or episodes either it's a film or it's a serial kind of serious um, mini series um yeah uh otherwise i have started on sal and gabby fix the universe i haven't read very much as you can tell you can hardly see um i'm on page 33 so i've only read a couple of chapters this morning um but I'm hoping to read more today. went for a gym session yesterday. I mentioned that. And uh, I feel the pain because, you know, because I haven't been um, for a long time. And so I'm not used to um, going to the gym so much. So all the muscles hurt. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping to go tomorrow so that the pain will leave. So... Um, yeah, I'm also having a little bit of a headache, so that's fun. Um, I might go for a walk soon, but at my walk I'll be listening to Skeleton Crew, so yeah. Um, and I should um, film a wrap-up of October, um, but I don't feel like doing anything right now, so I just did this 
quick update and I will check in with you later. Um, yeah, see ya.